Good morning, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for the first event in our latest webinar series, Review Basics, Tracking with the Markups List. My name is Amy, and I'm an account manager here at Bluebeam, and I also manage our training program, working directly with our customers in developing custom training sessions. Today's training is designed for new users of Review or existing users who might want to learn a bit more about how to use the markups list to track annotations. As you probably already know, Bluebeam Review is a smart, simple PDF solution that's designed to help you take your workflows digital. After today's training, you should be equipped to use our core markup features for annotating documents and tracking them in the markups list. You're going to learn how to do basic offline collaboration in the markups list, and you'll be able to create custom statuses and custom columns to add additional data fields to your markups list. Now, while review is used by many different people for this training, I'm going to assume that you're working somewhere within the AEC industry and the associated workflows. But at the end of the training, I'm going to cover some additional options for creating customized trainings for your team, if that would be useful. So let's go ahead and get started taking a look at the agenda. Um, I'm going to get started for about the first 20 minutes covering just some of the core features of review. We'll start off looking at the interface and navigating around. We'll cover um, how to use our markup tools and how to store them and reuse them from our tool chest. Then we'll get into the real meat of today's training, covering tracking the markups in the markups list and also some tools for accountability. We'll talk about how to import other markups onto a PDF file in the list. We'll cover some um, how to create custom columns for advanced data tracking and how to create reports from the markups list. Finally, um, I'll cover some additional tips and tricks for working more efficiently in the markups list and some additional training options that you have. The training is going to last one hour today. I do have my colleague Joel Marquez sitting right next to me, and he's available to answer any questions that come up during the training. So if I'm going too fast or you just missed something or want some additional details, please just type that question into the chat area, and Joel will respond um, to your questions in real time. And also at the very end, if we do have some time, we will take some group questions and be able to address those. So, um, and one other thing, I am actually recording this webinar, and it will be um, placed on our website within about a week. So let's go ahead and get started um, taking a look at Review's interface. I'm going to hit Escape. I just uh, was in presentation mode, and now I'm into the interface. Um, and let's just get a quick understanding of where all the tools are located. So the Review interface is designed with a command bar here at the top. And you'll see there's six icons here that are always going to remain the same. Our icon for opening up a new file, opening an existing file, saving, printing, emailing a file, and also getting into Studio, our collaboration tool. Those will always be there. These other icons on the right-hand side are going to change out uh, depending on which menu option you have selected here at the top. Um, so you'll notice as I select markup, now I have all of my markup tools are here at the top. We also have some very useful tool tips. So anytime you scroll over an icon here, it's actually going to tell you what it is. We can also click on any time you see a down arrow, and you'll see additional options. For instance, these are additional um, line markup tools that you have. So um, pretty simple interface to be able to move around in. We also have a number of our features hidden behind three panels. So you'll notice um, there's a panel here on the left-hand side. You can just click on um, this little um, white dot here to open up the panel. And we're going to talk about what's behind this in just a moment. The markups list that we're going to cover in depth is located here in the bottom panel. So you just click on this dot, and this is where the markups list is going to be located. We give you the ability to open it up and close it again to give yourself more screen real estate in working with your files. Finally, we have a third panel here on the right-hand side that you can open up as well. 
Now, review is designed in a very robust way to meet the needs of many different workflows within AEC. So we have a feature called Profiles. Um, and the idea behind Profiles is that um, we can customize our interface to basically meet the needs of different types of uses of the program. So you get to Profiles by clicking on View from the menu option, and you'll see this is the Profile Manager Guide, the little guy with the um, bow tie. When you click the down arrow, you'll see Review comes shipped with um, seven preset profiles. Right now, I'm in a simple profile. This is really designed just for basic PDF viewing. If I go ahead and select Construction, what you'll notice is my interface just reconfigured itself. And now I have a lot more toolbars displaying here at the top. I also have all of my markup tools displaying here on the right-hand side. Um, the way our customers are using profiles is essentially it allows them to customize the interface and which tools are showing to meet their particular needs. So it's going to essentially um, save what toolbars are showing, what icons are showing, and also what custom tool sets are displaying. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, what custom tool sets are. Um, so what you can do is click on this profile guy, and you can actually create your own custom profile for your company. Um, so I would just click on Add here. I'm going to go ahead and create a custom uh, profile and say OK. And then I can go in here and I can actually turn toolbars on and off. And we're going to go over more in depth on our customization webinar in a few weeks how to actually completely customize your interface. Um, but I can click this down arrow under toolbars, and you'll see these are all the ones that are currently turned on with the check marks. Let's say I really don't need advanced text turning on for what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it basically turns it off. So you'll see these commands, these icons over here, and have now disappeared. So our customers are essentially, like for instance, I had one customer who, who bought review for their subcontractors. They didn't want to overwhelm them with you know, 50 different buttons on the interface. So they literally got rid of everything and put about 10 commands on there, 10 icons for the exact commands they needed to use on a daily basis, and then they saved that as a profile. So what you can do once you've created the interface as you like it, you can then select it and then click on Export. Export it to your network drive, and then have everyone else on your team open up Review, click on the Profile Manager, and click Import, and they'll be able to import it. So essentially, everybody will be running with the same consistent look of the interface. Um, if you want to make sure to include the custom tool sets, you want to check that Include Dependencies, and that's going to save those as well to your custom profile. And all of this can actually be included as part of an automated deployment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And now that we've looked at the interface, let's now take a look at an individual PDF file and how to move around within it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new PDF file. Um, the first thing you'll notice here is I actually have multiple PDF files open in my interface. Um, it, review, you can basically open up um, multiple files at once and be able to literally just scroll back and forth by clicking on the different tabs, just like you might be used to in Internet Explorer. Um, so I've got a large format drawing open here. You'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, it shows me the size. It's 42 inches by 30 inches. Um, if I want to zoom in, just like you would when you're using AutoCAD, if you're familiar with that program, if you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, when I turn my scroll wheel up, it's actually going to zoom in on the drawing quite smoothly. And as I turn my scroll wheel down, it's going to zoom out on the drawing. If I needed to pan into this upper left-hand corner, I just press down on my scroll wheel, and I can move my mouse and be able to pan over into this corner. So you can see it's quite simple in review to be able to easily navigate around on even very, very large format drawings. So now let's take a look at another feature that helps our users work more efficiently, and that's called split screens. Um, so over here in the lower left-hand corner, um, we have an option to split vertical. When I click on that, it's going to split my screen in half. And in this case, it's showing me the same drawing on each side. Um, in review, you can split your screens up to 16 times. 
I wouldn't actually recommend that unless you have a very large monitor, but we do have a lot of customers that are working on 50-inch monitors so they can split it multiple times. Um, in this case, let's say I have this drawing. I have two different stairwells in different locations, and I want to be able to do a quick comparison of these stairwells to make sure that they're exactly the same. Um, so that's one way I can use this split screen feature with the same drawing to be able to look at different parts of it. We also have the ability to sync them up. In the lower right-hand corner, um, you can just simply click on Sync. And what that's going to do is, as I'm on the left-hand side, as I'm going in here and zooming into room 1259, you'll notice it's automatically going to sync it up on the right-hand side. And so what our customers are doing with this is if you need to do a quick comparison of a revision A and a revision B of the same drawing to see if there are any quick differences, you can split the screens and sync them up and to be able to just go through it and kind of eyeball any differences. You can also, of course, use this to look at two different files at the same time. So let's say I'm going in here and I'm marking up um, this drawing on the right-hand side and I want to actually be able to scroll through and see if there's any building codes that are applicable to the notes that I'm making. I can go scroll through the billing codes on one side and be able to do the markups on the other side. Uh, we also have the ability to open up a web tab. And I'm actually going to split this screen a third time. I'm going to go down here and split horizontally. So now you can see I have a horizontal split here. I'm simply right-clicking and I'm going to select Web Tab. And what that does is it opens up basically a web browser, goes directly to Google. And now I can go in and I'm going to search for California building codes because I need to see if there are any updated codes that are applicable to this. So I can go to the Standards Commission website here. So basically you don't have to leave the program to go online and do any searching that you need to do. You're able to do it all right here. Um, so that's how to actually open up a web tab. Now, um, once I'm completed this, I can actually go in and unsplit my screen by just clicking on this X, and I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to go back to just one screen here. Um, so that feature is called split screens. So now let's talk about opening up, how to open up and access your PDF files. So one way you could do that is just simply in your Windows Explorer, any file that has a PDF file format will automatically open up in Bluebeam. You could also go up here to the top and click on Open and select your file. You could also simply just right click here like I did before and select open to open a file. But we have a feature that makes it really easy to be able to access your most commonly used files that you need to access over and over again and it's called file access. You can access it, it's in the, the hidden panel here on the left hand side. We have a feature called tab access. It's this upside down triangle in the upper left hand corner. If I click on that, this is where all of those features that are hidden behind the panels, they're all listed here. Um, so I can just simply select file access and you'll see it opens up here in the left hand panel. Um, so what this is, is first of all at the bottom, it lists all of my recent files and I can sort those in different ways by date, by folder, or by most accessed. I actually have it set up for access history right now. So this shows me all of the files that I opened up today, um, the files I opened up yesterday, one week ago, and so on. And you'll notice a little thumbnail preview comes up in case I've forgotten exactly um, what that file looks like. Um, but let's say you're working with the same files over and over again on a project and you want to be able to quickly access them, you can create a project folder and pin a file. So if I wanted to pin these building codes, all I do is right click on it and you'll notice this option to pin it. Um, I can go in here and create a new folder by saying new category. I'm going to go ahead and set up a new folder for this ABC project. And you'll notice here at the top are all of my pinned folders. And here I have the ABC project, and underneath it I have the building codes. Um, so our customers are essentially pinning all of their files, um, their sheet sets, et cetera, that they're using over and over again into a project folder in file access. And this way they're able to quickly um, be able to open, up them, open them up with just one click of the mouse. 
So just to summarize, um, we've looked at how the interface is laid out with the command bar and the hidden panels. Um, you've seen a little bit about our profiles and how you can customize the interface and export that out. We've talked about how to navigate around on a PDF file, how to split screens, and how to open up files from file access. Now we're going to move into our markups um, capabilities, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to actually um, place the markups on the drawing. Um, so let's go ahead and open up that um, drawing. This is actually a one single floor of a Sundance Resort. Um, and let's go ahead and um, make some markups on this drawing. As I mentioned before, um, within the construction profile, all of the markup tools are located over here on the right-hand side. You can also access them here in the command bar. I prefer to access them over here. Um, just to point out a few, we have all of our text-based markups here at the top. So a simple text box, typewriter tool, a note, we have um, a pen tool and a highlighter. Um, down here um, at the bottom, we have our line tools, a call out, a cloud tool. Um, all of the tools that you might be used to if you're marking up documents on paper, all the things that you would normally do on paper, we've translated that into the digital realm. So you can now be able to just click on the icon to make that markup. So let's go ahead and let's say I have a column here that I want to draw attention to. So I want to go ahead and cloud it. Um, you just simply click on the cloud tool, and I can draw a cloud around that. Um, and let's say I want to actually um, make that stand out a little more. Um, we have a number of ways that you can adjust the properties of a markup. Um, we have a style bar here at the top. So I can simply select a fill color here but I want to actually be able to see the underlying content, so I can change the opacity. So now I can see the underlying content there. Um, let's say I want to do a quick call out. I'm going to select that and make a note. Um, here's, and review has um, a spell check built into the markups. So you'll notice it gave me a squiggly line and gave me some options of how to correct that spelling. Here's the updated column spec. Um, so I did a simple call out there, and I can actually insert an image um, as a markup. It's one of our markup tools, and you'll notice here on the uh, in the markup side at the bottom, there's an image icon. I can just simply click on that. It's going to ask me where's the image. I can go ahead and select it, and basically drag it out and put it down on my drawing. And so now I've placed that exact column on the drawing, so they know exactly what I'm talking about. We have a properties panel for each markup. Each markup has associated properties. Um, so if I actually select this cloud tool, you'll notice these are all of the, mar the properties of that markup, and I can actually change them all at once here. I changed it up here from the style bar, but I could actually change it from down here. So if I wanted to, for instance, thicken the line width or maybe even change it from red to black, I can do all of that right here. Uh, one thing that's very important that I wanted to point out that will make a lot of sense when we look at the markups list is this subject line here at the top. By default, the subject line is always going to be the type of markup, but we actually want to make it um, the type of comment that I'm making here. So then when we go in and sort all that data in the markups list, we'll be able to sort it in a way that makes sense. So because this is a structural type of comment, I'm actually going to change the subject line to be structural. I'm going to do the same thing for um, this other markup and this one as well. Um, so that way we'll be able to sort all of that. And that's typically what our customers are doing. They're making the subject line to be um, the discipline that that comment actually comes from. Um, so you can do all of that in the properties tab. Um, so let me go ahead and actually close that so we can see a little more. So we've just placed um, a few markups on this drawing. We could go and place a lot more if we wanted to. I wanted to point out to you now um, the tool chest, which I mentioned before. You can locate that from tab access, clicking on tool chest. And I realize I'm going a little bit briskly through this content, so I just wanted to remind anyone, if you have any questions or need more details on something, um, Jewel's sitting here just awaiting your questions, so please feel free to type those into the chat room. So um, what the tool chest is, you can think of it as a symbols library. It stores the commonly used markups so you can use, easily access them with just one click of the mouse and reuse them. Um, so under here where it says recent tools, 
these are all of the markups that I just placed on that drawing that are saved for me here. Um, and if I needed to place them out on the drawing again, for instance, this cloud, I could actually do that right here. Um, but you know, what's the chances that I'm going to need a cloud drawn that exact same shape? Um, if I actually double click on it, it changes. You can see that it looks a little different here. It changes into what's called properties mode. So properties mode is going to retain all of the appearance properties and also that subject line that I set. But it's going to allow me to essentially draw it in any shape that I want. So I can now go in here and um, pick points and put a cloud around this ceiling detail here. Um, so that allows you to reuse a markup um, with its properties, but be able to draw it in any shape you want. These recent tools are going to clear out when I close my copy of review. So if you want to save them to be able to reuse them over and over again, you simply want to drag them up to my tools, and that's going to be saved in your copy of review. Now, what our customers, what we're seeing them doing with the tool chest, and we're going to, again, talk about this more in the customization uh, webinar, is they're creating custom tool sets. And the best practices are they're actually color coding them per discipline and setting up specific subject lines for each one. So for instance, under this electrical one, um, if I went in here and needed to do a call out saying um, uh, light fixtures are not working here, I've got this custom electrical tool set that I already set up, and it's color-coded, and you'll notice over here in the properties tool that subject line is already saved for me. Um, so you can set up a custom tool set by simply clicking on manage tool sets, this cog wheel. This is where you can turn tool sets on and off, and this is where you can go in and add a custom one um, and be able to save tools into it. You can then import and export those tool sets to everyone on your team. Those are also saved with the profile. That's what I was mentioning before when I said check include dependencies. So that way everyone on your team can be running off the same customized tool sets. Um, another way these are used um, very frequently is as part of the punch process. So you'll notice here I actually have an example of a custom punch tool set. And these are just simply a circle markup with text in the middle. So if I walked into this room, for instance, and I saw a problem with the wall, um, I don't have to actually do a markup. I can literally just drag um, this punch key that I already created out here that talks about needing a paint touch-up. And when you look at the properties, you can see in, this, in the comments it already is saying exactly what needs to be done. Furthermore, if I had to, I could go in here and take a quick image and literally put it on there so someone knows exactly what I'm talking about. And if you happen to be using an iPad and you're running um, Review's iPad app, you can use the camera on the iPad to take the image and with one click of the button be able to paste it down on that drawing. Um, so again, you can see how the tool chest can really save you a lot of time and be able to help you and your team work more efficiently in marking up these drawings. So um, now that we've covered how to actually mark up and how to save your markups in the tool chest, we're now going to get into the featured topic for today's webinar, which is how to track all this data with the markups list. So let's go ahead and move into that. And just to point out a little bit about the markups list, um, essentially it provides you with a ability to process, access, review, and summarize all of your annotations on a PDF. You can manage and track every single markup made on a drawing in this list. So you can really think of it like an Excel spreadsheet that will tell you who said what and when they said it. You know, if you're still working on paper for doing your review process, you would normally have to, after you marked up the, the document, you'd have to go back to your office and literally transcribe all of that into an Excel spreadsheet. With the markups list, you don't have to do that because it's all done for you. But it's even really more powerful than that when you get what you can do with the markups list. And you'll see here is a list of what our customers can actually use it for. Um, you can use it to actually interact with other people on your team by hitting the reply button and talking back and forth about the comments. You can also add 
add additional data fields right into that list that can help you track costs, it can help you set due dates, um, literally anything that you can imagine, setting a responsibility for who has to take care of that task, all of that can be done um, in our markups list. So you can see it's a lot more than just tracking data. So let's actually go in and take a look at it with some examples. So let's go back into our drawing that we added some markups to. And as I mentioned before, the markups list is located down here in the panel at the bottom. So you'll notice now it's got some data in here. And the first thing I can go through here, um, literally, like I said, every single markup is tracked here. So um, you can click this down arrow to scroll through each and every markup, and you'll notice um, review will actually jump on the drawing to where that markup is actually located. Um, so it's linking the, the list information to the actual markup itself. Um, you can ask, actually go in here if you needed to and collapse all of these. So basically it's only showing me the subject line, or I can expand them to be able to see everything in here. Um, all of these columns here, um, the width of it can be adjusted. So I can literally just click on that line there and be able to adjust the width of this um, to meet my needs. Um, we have a number of columns that come pre-set up with review, and then as I mentioned, you can set up these custom columns. So if you click on columns and then the down arrow, you'll see these are all of the columns that are currently um, showing here. So I could actually turn them off, like for instance, if I don't need layer, I can turn that one on, off. Maybe I do want to see the page number um, that the markup is on, and I can turn that on there. So you can turn those on and off. Um, you can also go in here and be able to sort these uh, markups. And this is where, when I talked about the subject line, where it really becomes important. So to sort, you simply click on the column header, and it's going to sort it in alphabetical order. So you can see um, these all reference those subject lines. So my electrical is here, the painting issues, the structural issues. Um, these are all sorted um, by the discipline or what kind of issue it relates to. You could also go in and sort, for instance, by author, if you have multiple authors. You just click on the, um, the, the header here, and it's going to sort by that. But I'm going to go back to sorting by subject line. Um, so in terms of how you would actually maybe potentially use this for tracking issues, um, one quick way is to just simply um, use our checkbox here. So as something is actually dealt with, you could go in here and just simply click a checkbox saying, yes, this has been dealt with, yes, this has been dealt with. That's one way. Um, and, um, even more, um, a way that adds even more information is using our status fields. So if you're, for instance, a project manager um, that's in charge of going through on this design review process and making sure everything gets dealt with, um, you could go in here and set a status. So we have some preset statuses for a review process, accepted, rejected, canceled. So for instance, light fixture is not working here. I could go ahead and set this as completed. So it's going to offer me some accountability here, essentially a paper trail. So it's going to say, um, this Amy and Guaba said that this was completed on this date and this time. Um, so no one can say that they didn't actually you know, say, say something. Basically, you have an actual paper trail of when someone said something was completed or rejected. Um, so that's how you can set a status. Of course, you might have your own terminology that you want to use for statuses, so we allow you to completely customize those. If you click on this cog wheel, you'll notice it says Manage Status. Um, so this is going to open up the Manage Status dialog. For that review process, you'll notice these were the options that I had here. If you wanted to change any of these, maybe you just want to change the terminology, I could just simply click on Modify here, and you can change that word. You can also set a visual color representation that when you set that status, it's going to change the color of the markup. And you can do that by clicking on Color here, and then I'm going to say any markup that was um, said that I said was a, a accepted, I'm going to go ahead and turn it green. So that way when you're just looking at the drawing, you can visually see what issues have been dealt with. Also, I'm going to say anything that was marked as completed, I'm also going to turn that green. 
as well. Um, I could then go in to say anything that says it's rejected. I'm going to go ahead and turn that, and I'm going to make it actually um, purple to make it stand out more. So anything that's rejected is purple. So then, um, when I go back into my um, markups list here, for instance, um, for this painting process, um, this particular um, markup here, if I go in here and I set this to be accepted, you'll notice that punch key just turned to green. So now I have a visual representation showing um, the status of that particular item. Um, in terms of setting these custom statuses, you can also, I'm going to go back into that manage style, uh, status box, you can also create um, entirely new um, status models. So let's say, for instance, you want to have a different review process for the engineer. So I could do an engineer um, review status here. Accepted and rejected option. So you could set up additional levels, and some of our customers do that, have additional levels of statuses that they need to set. So I'm going to go ahead and set OK. So now you'll notice in the status field, I have um, one for review that I can set, and I have a second one for the engineer review. So they can actually go in and um, set their own status. So I could go ahead and say that they're, they accepted that as well. And again, we have this nice little neat paper trail showing everything. So um, that's a little bit about statuses and how to set up custom statuses in the markups list. I hope that was useful for you. Um, I want to show you another very useful feature in the markups list. Um, and basically, the scenario here that we find our customers find themselves in this situation a lot is if you're reviewing a drawing, you're marking up a drawing, and maybe you have five different people that need to mark up the same drawing from different disciplines. Each person has to put their own comments on it. So as a project manager or project engineer, you send out this drawing, same drawing, to five different people. They all mark it up. They all email it back to you. So now in your email box, you have five different versions of this drawing with all different different markups, and your task is to compile all of those. So if you had to do that by hand, it would be a little bit maddening, but we have a very easy way to do that in an automated fashion with what's called import comments. So this icon here um, that says import on it, you just want to go ahead and click on it, and it's going to ask you, um, tell me where those files are that you want to import the comments off of. So I'm going to go ahead and select them. And I can actually just multi-select all five of these files all at once and say open. And review is going to do all the work for me. And it's literally going to take all of those. And it's going to, and let me close this a little bit so you can see. You'll notice here at the top I have my key here. It's all color coded. So each comment is in a different color depending on the discipline. And I've got them all placed down on this drawing at once. Um, so I can be able to see everyone's comments all at once. And now you'll notice down here in the markups list, we have a lot more data here. So we've got all of the architect's comments, the electrical comments, mechanical, plumbing. Everything is neatly sorted down here in the list. Um, another thing that you can actually do in review is filter comments. So let's say, now that I've got all this data, I really only want to look at the electrical comments right now. You want to click on filter here. And then you'll see a down arrow here with, within each column header. I'm going to filter by subject. And I'm going to say, only show me the electrical comments. Um, so now you can see only the electrical comments are showing here. And on the drawing itself, all of the other comments are still there, but they're grayed out. So only the electrical comments are showing in color, so, so they're standing out a bit more. So now I can go through and be able to just deal with these electrical comments and also perhaps create a report just of these particular comments. Um, so I'm actually going to show you one of the ways that you can set up a custom column, and then we'll actually talk about how to do that. But I'm just going to show you how it plays out in the markups list. I set one up for responsibility. So this is a very common need that our customers have, either for the punch process or any sort of um, you know, walking or um, doing a review process. You need to set, aside, set up a responsibility for who has to deal with these issues. So I set up a custom column for that. So now you'll notice under each annotation, there's a list of names that I already set up of who has to potentially deal with this. 
So I can go in here and simply set uh, Michael Smith, who's in charge, he's a subcontractor working on this right now, um, and he's in charge of dealing with most of these issues that need to be resolved. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to show you how to actually set this up in just a moment. Um, so now you'll notice I have the responsibility set here. So now let's say I actually want to go ahead and create a report. And I want to create this report just for the issues that Michael Smith has to deal with. So again, I can use my filtering ability. I have filter checked, and I can click the down arrow and filter by M. Smith. So now I'm only showing these issues that M. Smith has to deal with, and I can create a report summarizing this and just email it off to him so he can get to work. Um, so I can go ahead and create a report by clicking on summary. Um, that's what you want to select to create a report. You have a couple different options. Um, you can export that to a CSV file that you could then open up in Excel. You could also do an XML file. And you can also create a PDF summary, which is what I'm actually going to do. Um, so it gives me some options here. I'm going to append my report to the actual drawing itself. And I'm going to just change the title. And I'm going to just call it um, M. Smith Task List. And I'm going to say OK. So review is going to actually create this report for me. And now let me just close out of this and open up the file. You'll notice this is my original file. And now the next page is my task list that I created. So this is the task list for Michael Smith. And it shows each markup is listed here, along with all the columns that I have turned on. Um, so everything is notated. Of course, I can turn any of these columns off that I don't want showing. It has the issue here. And you'll notice it has a thumbnail, a small thumbnail, of what that markup looks like. Light fixture not working here. And review automatically hyperlinks this for you. So when I click on this thumbnail, it's going to take me back to my original drawing, and it's going to show me that markup within the greater context of that drawing. Um, so very quick and easy now to just click on email, send this off to Michael Smith, and he's off to work with his list of tasks that he has to do. All of that directly from the markups list. Um, so that's a little bit about how to actually create a report in the markups list. Let's actually go back down here. And um, I'm going to turn off filter. In order to get all of your markups back, you just want to turn off filter. And it's going to basically show you everything again. So I want to now get into um, a little more detail about those custom columns. And in order to do that, I'm going to click off onto a different file. It's actually the exact same drawing. Um, but this is a drawing that was marked up by an estimator. And um, I didn't actually cover it in this um, webinar, but review actually has um, the capability to take measurements, to calibrate a drawing, and take all kinds of measurements to be able to do actual takeoffs and estimations right within review. So just as an overview, you'll notice that each of these are actually area measurements of these different rooms. Um, so if I go ahead and take a look at the markups list, um, you're going to notice it looks a little bit different. So these are actually sorted by different types of materials. So down here at the bottom, um, I set up some materials for flooring. Um, so the person went in and actually took the measurements. And you can see this is the square footage of this room. And I actually set up custom columns for different types of flooring that they potentially want to use. And it, review will actually allow you to set up a subtotal and be able to calculate totals for material costs and also um, uh, labor costs as well, if you want. So to set up the custom columns, you're going to go over here to the right of columns and click on the cog wheel that says Manage Columns. This is going to open up your Manage Columns dialog. This is where you can turn columns on and off. But I'm going to click on the tab that says Custom Columns. And I'm going to simply show you how these were set up, and we're going to set up a new one. So under Material, this was a new custom column that I set up. I'm going to click on Modify to show you. We have different types of columns. So this refers to the type of data that's going to go into that column. In this case, I wanted it to be choice, because I'm going to put different types of flooring. Um, you could also, for instance, if you want to set up a column for a due date, you could do it as date. Um, in this case, we're going to do choice. 
So you'll notice all of these materials I already set up in here. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one by clicking on Add. And it's going to ask me what is the type of, what is the item here that I'm adding. So I'm going to say um, this is tile, and it's um, a Spanish tile option. So I'm going to do tile Spanish. The subject line refers to um, what subject line am I going to tie this into, and I'm going to say flooring. So that means any time a markup, such as an area measurement, any time the subject line is changed to flooring, this custom column is going to be an option that you can select. I'm going to assign it an actual value for the cost per square foot. In this case, it is $6.49. I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, we have this option for the Spanish tile that I set up. I'm going to say OK and OK. And now what I wanted to show you is if I go into this markups list, and let's say um, these area measurements, I actually want to change these to be Spanish tile. I have that option now. And you'll notice that subtotal is actually updating itself in real time. So because it's more expensive uh, material, it's updating that subtotal for me. Um, let me show you quickly how that subtotal was actually calculated. Let's go back into our custom columns option. And I'm going to click on subtotal. And I'm going to click on modify to show you. So the type of data that this particular column contains is a formula. So I'm going to set it to be formula. And review is going to ask you, you know, what do you basically want to do here? So I'm going to say I want the value of this formula to be the product. So I'm going to be multiplying two things. I'm going to multiply the measurement column times the material column that I just set up with that cost. So those are the two things that I'm going to be multiplying together in that formula. Um, you can really get very complex in here and actually set up custom formulas as well. Um, that's how people calculate like the slope of a roof um, for tiling a roof. Um, but in this case, we're doing something very simple, area times material cost. I'm going to say OK. Um, and that's actually how that formula was set up there. So you can see now um, in the actual markups list, and let me display that measurement column because it wasn't showing before. Um, I now have the measurement here, 324 square foot times um, that material cost, and that's what's giving me that subtotal. So you can see this is really how um, our customers are able to use the markups list is more than just the ability to track markups, but actually being able to do basic takeoffs and estimation. Because once you've done all this work in here, you can go in and you can create a summary report and, for instance, maybe do this to CSV. Then you can open it up in Excel, do any other sort of manipulation of the data that you want. And you know, you've know you got now a very, very powerful tool um, to be able to add additional data to these markups. Um, so I wanted to go back and show you, um, we were talking about that responsibility column before. Um, go back and actually show you how to do that. Um, so going back to that other drawing um, under responsibility, again, this is the custom column. We go to custom columns. And this was the responsibility that was already set up. Um, if I wanted to go in here and add a new person to be responsible for issues, all I just simply do is click Add. Um, and now I can add, I'm going to add E. Stone. And let's say he is a um, electrical guy. So he's an, a new electrical subcontractor. Um, I don't need to assign a numeric value to him. I can just say OK um, and then say OK again. And now you'll notice under the electrical, um, when I look at all the options, E-Stone is now an option. So you can see they're all linked to those subject lines. So when I go up actually to the architect options, um, there's no E-Stone there because he wasn't associated with the subject line of architect. Um, so you're going to always link those into those subject lines to be able to um, have different people for different disciplines that could be um, associated with it. So one final thing with the custom columns I wanted to point out, they are attached 
to this individual PDF file. So this responsibility column, you can think of it as being saved with this particular PDF. If you want to set up some custom columns that you're going to need to use over and over again with different files, you want to click on this button that says Apply Template. That's going to allow you to apply the above custom columns that you set up to any new PDF document that you're opening up. That way you don't have to recreate it each and every time. So make sure you hit Apply Template there. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. So now I've shown you um, how to track your markups in the markups list, how to set the status, and how to create custom statuses. I've shown you how to sort and filter and create reports, and how to add additional data using our custom columns feature. I wanted to complete the training talking about a few additional helpful tips and tricks for just working more efficiently within the markups list. Um, so I can actually stay in this drawing to show you this. Um, I mentioned before briefly how you can actually interact with other people in the markups list. We have the ability to um, put a reply into the markups list. So let's say um, we have a comment here, and I'm going to stretch this out so I can actually see it better. Um, replace with ADA compliant fixtures, a plumbing comment here. Um, if you just select that comment, and I right click on it, and I hit reply. Um, so just right click reply. Um, now, um, if I'm maybe a plumbing person that's looking at this, um, I can go ahead and type a reply here. Um, uh, I'm sending you option or the compliance fixtures. Um, so now I can go in here and basically put an actual reply in there um, so the person who originally sent me this file can actually see my comment right in there in the markups list. And of course, it's tracked saying exactly who said that um, particular reply. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, um, with these subject lines, if you remember correctly, um, the place that you actually go in and set this up is over here um, in the Properties tab for that particular markup. So this is where that subject line is here. But if you forget to set one, you can actually change it right here um, within the markups list. So I have this image here. This had to do with that painting issue. So all I do is I just double clicked on that subject line. And now I can just simply change this to whatever I want it to be. And I'm going to go ahead and change that to painting. And you'll notice as soon as I did that, it basically sorted itself into um, the painting area here. So you can just change that subject line right there. Um, another cool feature, especially if you're dealing with um, a file with a lot of text in it, um, and this is a setting in our preferences that you're going to need to set. If I go over here into my back into my building codes here, um, let's say I want to actually take all of the text from this code, and I want to be able to have it in my markups list so that I can then put it into a report. Um, you want to make sure, if you go over to your settings um, in review and click on preferences, um, it's going to give you all of our, our, of our preferences for the program. If you click on markup, you want to make sure that you have this checked. It says copy selected text into the text markups. So essentially any text that you select, that you highlight or underline, it's going to be copied into the markups list. So make sure that's checked. And now what you'll notice, if I go into this um, billing codes and I click on my highlighter and I go ahead and highlight this, all of it is just been copied into the comments field. I actually know a lot of students who um, use review for studying. And so when they highlight um, the notes, the important notes, it's all copied into the comments field. And then they're able to create a report of the most important notes that they can then study. Um, it's very useful like that. Another thing that I wanted to show you in the preferences, um, this author name, um, it's automatically set to your computer name. Um, in some cases, your computer name not, might not be what you want to be here because it might not reference who you are. Um, so the place where you can change that under your settings, under preferences, um, it's actually under the general tab. So the very top here, it says user. And this is where you can go ahead and change it from the default computer name to wh whatever you want it to be because that's going to reference the author in all of these markup lists. So I can go ahead and say OK. Um, another quick thing, let me go back to that drawing that has all the markups on it. Um, it I have this 
this drawing that's now covered in markups. Let's say I want to just print a copy of this drawing, but I want it to be a clean copy. I don't want all the markups on it. Um, I can simply click on this icon here that says hide markups. When I do that, all of the markups disappear. Um, so I can then go in and print the file. And then when I want the markups to come back, I just simply click on it again. It's a toggle button, and they come back. Um, and you don't have to worry about, um, even if you closed out of that file and you still had the hide markups selected, whenever you open it up again, they're going to reappear. They haven't disappeared. You're just turning them on and off if you need to have a clean file. Um, just uh, two other um, tips that I wanted to offer. Um, in terms of these columns, if you need to change the order of how they appear, some of our customers have a very um, specific set of different um, sort of statuses and different things they have to go through and check in the markups list and they need it in a specific order. You can click on Manage Columns, and in this first Display Order field, this is where you can change it. So let's say this comments column, I want it to come directly after the subject right at the top. Um, I can just select it and just click this up arrow and it's going to move it all the way here to the top. So now when I say OK, you'll notice the comments is now directly after the subject line. Um, so one final point that I want to make um, that's an important thing to note has to do with flattening and the markups list. So if you don't know, flattening is basically a way to flatten all of the markups, because you can think of the markups as residing on a layer on top of the underlying drawing. Um, but they can all be changed. So like when I zoom in here, you know, I can go in here and I can change this, I can change this text. It's all editable. Um, if you want to send this file out to someone and you want to make absolutely sure they can't change any of these markups, then the best practice is to flatten the document. However, uh, and you can do that by clicking on document here on the menu bar and you'll notice there's a flatten option. So when I select that, um, it talks about flattening these markups. When I flatten this file, it's going to make all of the data in the markups list completely disappear. It will not be available to you for any sort of tracking. We do allow for markup recovery or to unflatten, so I'm going to keep that checked, but I'm going to show you what happens. Um, I'm going to click flatten, and now you'll notice all of this data has now disappeared. I got a very scary call from a customer once who didn't know that and freaked out because his markups disappeared. So it's very important to know that's what will happen. But you'll notice and these markups, now they're flattened. It's like they're steamrolled onto the content. You cannot change them. Um, let me go back in here and actually unflatten it. I can click on unflatten this button. And now you'll see I can select all of these um, different layers. And I can say unflatten. And now they're all going to reappear with all of that data. Um, so if you just need, you want to keep all of your data there, but maybe you only want to flatten one markup. A good you know, thing that you might want to flatten, for instance, is a stamp. So if I go over here um, to my markups, we have a stamp option. Let's say I want to go in here and add an approval stamp um, for the architect. I've just added my stamp here. Um, I definitely don't want someone to be able to take my stamp or change it, um, so I want to flatten it. We offer you the option to flatten an individual markup. So you can simply right click on it and select flatten. So that's going to flatten just this stamp. It won't be in the markups list, but everything else that I want to be able to um, you know, work with that data in the markups list is going to remain there. So that's what I recommend if you just need to flatten one or two things. Um, but if you do need to flatten everything, it's fine. Just make sure you understand you won't have that data in the list. Um, another option we do have is called locking a markup. So for instance, um, if I select this markup, final carpet inlay pattern, and I select lock, um, that is going to lock it. So you'll notice it's now grayed out. I cannot go in here and change it. Um, so that's one way to offer a little bit of security there. But if you sent this file to someone who had review, um, they could simply go into the markups list and check this and uncheck it and be able to change it. So really the best way if you want to make sure no one can change it is to actually go in and flatten it. So um, that's 
that's what I wanted to share with you as far as flattening and, and the markups list. And that pretty much concludes um, the content that I wanted to include for today. Um, I did want to point out um, our two new upcoming trainings and also some additional options um, for getting more customized training with review. Um, so if you go to our homepage, bluebeam.com, and scroll down under community, on the right-hand side it says Bluebeam events. Um, if you click on that, you'll notice we have a list of our upcoming webinars, um, and you can go in here and actually read more about two upcoming webinars on the 5th. Um, we're going to focus on, again, we're going to start with our core features, and then we're going to really talk about how to maximize the use of review for collaboration, specifically with studio. Um, and then on the 26th of February, we're going to get really into the detailed nitty gritty of how to customize, how to s completely customize your interface, how to create those custom tool sets that we talked about today. Um, that's going to be on the 26th. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're hungry for more information, and I hope you are, um, I encourage you to click on Bluebeam University. And this is our free training area of our website. And we have probably between 80 and 100 different videos. They're each about 5 to 10 minutes in length. And for instance, I clicked on Review 201 here. You can kind of take yourself through a sequence of courses. Um, you know, this is where if you wanted to learn more about the tool chest or specifically the markups list, um, you can click on this and go ahead and open up those videos and be able to take yourself through sort of a, a self-guided um, study here. This is also where I'm going to have a link to this webinar. If you click on Bluebeam webinars, it's going to um, be posted here as well in about a week. Uh, and finally, um, I wanted to share with you some options if your company is looking for a very customized training. Um, we have some paid training options. We do come out and do on-site training with customers, so we can come out and spend the whole day with you, which is really, to me, it's the best way for your team to get up and running, um, because people can literally have their laptops there and be going through all of these, these different workflows and actually trying it out as the trainer is leading you through. And we can really customize these, so literally be working on your exact files, dealing with your exact day-to-day -day workflows and the trainer can show you how to do that in review. Um, for customers who maybe have teammates all over the country, we do offer web-based webinars. Again, we can customize them to specifically fit your needs, use your files as demo examples in the training to be able to take you through the pieces of how to use review for your process. And we've, of course, done this for specific groups. We've created um, specific trainings for project managers, CAD managers, designers, estimators, et cetera. Um, so please feel free to email us at training at bluebeam.com if you need some more information or want to go ahead and set up one of those trainings. So, whew, that was a lot. We have about four minutes left, and I wanted to see if there was any um, questions that have come in that seem like uh, a lot of people are having similar questions. Um, I have just a few minutes to address those um, here. So let me see what's, um, what's come up here. I have, um, I have one person asking, what are the file formats that you can export the markups report to? Um, and as I mentioned before, um, that's clicking on the summary option, and you have three options right now, CSV, um, um, XML, which is essentially, um, XML can be opened in Excel as well, but it gives you a very sort of tabled format. It looks a lot better than just CSV. Um, and then, of course, you also have the option to export that to a PDF summary. Um, and that's the three options that you have. I have another question here. Um, can you save the properties for a markup um, and make it a default for that markup? And, and yes, you can. Um, let me actually show you how to do that uh, with a markup. So if you had, for instance, um, this is a text box mark markup. If I go over here into my properties for this text box, um, you'll notice down here at the bottom um, there's some options here. If I click set as default, um, those properties for that markup is going to be um, saved as a default. So anytime I actually um, 
create a text box, it's always going to have this exact same background color, size of text, et cetera. So that's how you make it a default. Um, someone's asking um, for more information on um, the iPad in review. And um, if you actually um, go to um, the iTunes Store, um, the App Store, and you just go ahead and do a search for Review, R-E-V-U, iPad, um, you'll be able to download our Review iPad app. Um, it is not a full, you know, it doesn't have all the full capabilities um, that, you know, Bluebeam Review does for Windows, um, but it's also only roughly $10, so, um, but it does have, it has a massive amount of power, and you can basically, a lot of our customers are using it in the field, um, basically being able to open up their files, um, for instance, from Dropbox, open them up in the field. It works great for the punch process. Um, you can actually be able to use those custom tool sets, um, the, the punch keys, and be able to drag them out on the iPad. So it has a lot of really, really powerful functionality. Um, so I really encourage you to go to the App Store and download that and try it out. And we're constantly you know, updating that on a regular basis. We just came out with a new version update, uh, I think about a week ago, um, and adding new features to it. And it's getting more and more powerful all the time. So um, definitely check out the uh, Review iPad app for using us in the field. So I think that's about all the time we have today. Um, I thank you again for giving me your time um, to really learn more about review and the markups list. I hope this has been helpful to you and has piqued your interest about how you can really use our program um, to a greater degree in your daily work. Um, so thanks again. Have a wonderful rest of your day.